First question, what got you into comedy? I know you were at West Virginia for football, now you're with the Colts, but what got you into comedy? So Drew, I've been um, telling stories to my friends and family ever since I could remember. When I was a child, my dad and I used to travel around the country playing soccer. We'd drive these long road trips. And when I get back, I would tell the stories to my friends and they would laugh. And when I was in college, I would have my roommates in the living room and my teammates in the living room and I'd be telling them stories and uh, just kind of giving my perspective on things. And then when I got to the NFL, is the same thing. So my entire life, I've been telling stories to people about just ridiculous situations that I've gotten myself into. And then I got a chance to meet the folks from Bob and Tom. And uh, I started telling stories to them. And Bob Kaboyan, who's one of my best friends, he's my next-door neighbor, he said, why don't you get on stage, man? You should do this on stage. And uh, I think to get on stage, it takes a certain level of confidence because you're saying, I'm funny, come laugh at me, you know? And I didn't have that level of confidence, really, um, and so the first night I went on stage, it was at a Bob and Tom event at Butler University, Clues Hall. They, they asked me if I wanted to host it. I said, can I do a set? And they said, for sure. How much, how long do you want? It was, they said, I said, five minutes, I think is good. And I was up there for 25 minutes. And, <laughs> uh, as soon as I started telling stories, it was just like I was in a living room with my friends and family. Uh, everybody seemed to enjoy them. And, uh, it's become something that I've really fallen in love with. I, I absolutely love it, man. Mm -hmm. And you said that you would tell stories with your dad and your friends. Who's like your inspiration for some of your stories? Is it mostly about you or do you kind of talk about your past life growing up, your family, your friends? Everything is life stories. Everything that I talk about is life stories. Uh, from growing up with my dad, who's one of the most awesome humans on earth. He's my role model. Uh, he was a truck driver for the early portion of my life and then he got into to selling finishing supplies. He's just a blue collar man who uh, loves life and has done everything for me and my mom the same way and then college was a blast I went to school at West Virginia University and I was very lucky to be there during a time when uh, we were very successful and then when I got to the pros my first year we went to the Super Bowl uh, so everything is kind of just drawn upon life experiences I've lived a very ridiculously lucky life I know that uh, but I've also put myself into some odd situations and found myself in pretty sticky situations and uh, if you just find the humor in everything, uh, life is better, and I've been able to do that. And it's been a lot of fun sharing my life with people, and people seem to enjoy it because they're getting a view of the NFL that they've never seen before. Uh, there's never been an active player do a stand-up comedy special. And I'm kind of giving them a peek inside their favorite sport, their favorite league, uh, what life is like from the bottom of the totem pole, which is what a punter is. And uh, I'm just lucky to have the best job in the world. And when I get on stage and tell the stories, I'm just... I'm just sharing life experiences. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is your favorite story that you've told or, or experience that you've had? You can either choose college as a kid or with the Colts. What, what's your favorite story that you love telling and that you'll always tell? So my favorite story to tell, and there's a bunch of them, is uh, they're about my dad. So my dad, my entire life, has told me these things, and I've always found them absolutely hilarious, but he's just dead serious, right? And it wasn't until I did my first show where I started quoting him and the entire audience was like crying, laughing, uh, that he came up to me after the show and he goes, I guess I am kind of funny, aren't I? Like he had no idea the things that he was saying was funny until 1,500 people were crying, laughing at his quotes. So it's just anytime I could talk about my dad and my family, uh, it's a lot of fun. But I mean, I was teammates with some Hall of Famers, some legends. I got a chance to play in a Super Bowl, kick off a Super Bowl. In college, I won four bowl games. The team I was on won four bowl games. Uh, and when I was in high school, I got a chance to, to earn a scholarship at a kicking camp. I've been so lucky to have all these events happen that lead to great stories. Um, and people seem to enjoy them. But anytime I talk about my dad, I really love it because he had no idea how hilarious he was until I started telling these stories to large groups of people. Uh, talk about Peyton Manning a little bit. You're, you were able to play with him for a couple of seasons. He's, he retired. Uh, talk about the impact he had, uh, the kind of person that he was when he was around you. Just kind of talk a little bit about Peyton. Well, the big thing about Peyton uh, is he's obviously an incredible football player. What he's done to, to the city of Indianapolis, the state of Indiana, uh, but the NFL in general, he's just come in, he's a consummate professional, he's a robot, he's meticulous, he works hard, he's an incredible passer, he's, he's great at everything. But off the field, he was just a guy's guy, that, and a lot of people don't really know that. They don't uh, expect that. You expect these professional athletes to kind of be 
um, untouchable, different humans. But he's just a guy that drinks beer. He, he has a good time. He cracks jokes. And he just so happens to be an incredibly, incredibly talented football player. Uh, I was lucky to get to watch him work because it inspired me to work harder, inspired me to, to kind of try to become the greatest at what I do. Uh, off the field, what he did in the community was incredible. It inspired me to do that. And then him just being a good guy. I mean, the, you, a lot of superstars get a bad rap because negativity hogs publicity. But he's one of those guys that you you don't hear much negative stuff said about him from anybody that knows him because he's, he's just a good dude. And... Uh, for me to come straight out of college to a team that had him on it with his leadership, plus you adding guys like Adam Vinatieri, Robert Mathis, Dwight Freeney was here, Dallas Clark, Gary Brackett, uh, Ryan Dean, you go through Joseph Adai, you go through the list of guys, Jeff Saturday. Uh, I was very fortunate to have all those guys in my life whenever I was younger um, and just kind of learn from them. Peyton, Peyton's one of those guys who was just, he's the man. And uh, everybody knows it, and I was very lucky to be teammates with him. Mm -hmm. Talk about the the golf trips that Peyton goes on. Are you gonna? Are you still gonna continue those, or uh, or, is, or are they over? I'm a horrible golf. <laughs> so everybody on the internet uh, heard the story about me going golfing with Peyton in and, and French Lake, Indiana. It was whenever I was a rookie. I had no idea why I was invited to this trip. Uh, if you get a chance to check it out, there's some adult language, so I don't recommend kids to listen to it. <laughs> That's kind of my comedy style. I speak to adults. Um, because kids don't know what a punter is, so I, they're, they're not my. I mean, I'm an adult. I'm an adult. I speak to adults. Yeah. Uh, I love kids. I, I I love everything about them. But my form of comedy is for adults. But Peyton, like, he had no idea who I was, and he invited me to go on this golf trip with him. And that just shows the type of guy he is. He extended an olive branch to be friends with me. He didn't have to. Um, and he's a much better golfer than I am. And I assume now that he's retired. Uh, the Papa John's business is going to do really well because he'll probably put a little bit more effort into that. Not that they're not already doing fantastic. <laughs> and his golf game is going to be fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in the offseason, there were a couple new rule changes. You led the league in touchbacks. Um, there's a, a new rule for touchbacks and everything, and I know you tweeted about it and gave us your thoughts, but just kind of elaborate a little bit about your thoughts about the new rule involving touchbacks. Yeah, so the touchback has gone uh, from the 20 to the 25. And I think early in the season, you'll see a lot of guys trying to strategize and kick the ball higher and uh, tackle people, tackle the returner inside to 25 to kind of gain some yards. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as the season goes on, you'll see a lot of touchbacks. I think I think this rule is in place to to further the safety of the players and to uh, protect the future of the game. Uh, and I think it will do that. I think it will eliminate a lot of returns because kickoffs and a kickoff in the NFL back in the day, like when I was a rookie, the kickoffs were from the 30. It was just 10 car crashes happening at the same time. Just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom. Guys trying to provide. Oh, sorry. Guys trying to uh, provide for their families, trying to make a living, trying to live out their dreams. These are the bottom half of the roster. Guys that get turned over weekly. Guys who just lay it on the line, uh, just trying to make a tackle. And the collisions were so monstrous. I mean, it was gigantic, and I think that's why it was one of the most exciting plays in football, but it was a very dangerous play as well. So I think these rules are all about trying to further the safety of the players and the health, um, but I think it's going to – I think a lot of kickoff returns are going to uh, be missing, though, next year. Okay. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with you there. Um, talk about this past year for the Colts. It was difficult. You guys missed the playoffs. As a Colts fan, I know it was very difficult. Um, just talk about – I know Andrew Luck's coming back next year. Hopefully he's going to be completely healthy. Just talk about your expectations for next year. I think the big thing about the NFL is if you want to be successful, you got to make sure you miss the injury bug. It's a, it's a lot of luck, and I don't say that as a pun because of Andrew Luck, but you got to really make sure that some key guys don't get hurt. Uh, when your superstar stud quarterback gets hurt, it's going to be tough to win in this league. Matt Hasselbeck came in and did an incredible job. I mean, he was a great leader, great football player, uh, but – the expectations we put on ourselves every single year is to win the Super Bowl. In the locker room, the object, uh, the only reason why a lot of us are playing is to win a Super Bowl. That's what it's all about. And the expectations were outside of the locker room this year. Everybody was expecting us to have a huge year, and we kind of faulted. Uh, we, we disappointed ourselves. We disappointed Colts Nation, which uh, is, is worse than anything we've ever wanted. But we got a chance to come back next year. We got Chuck Pagano back. Andrew Luck's going to be healthy. And... I'm real excited for next year because we got a lot of talent, and when you have a great quarterback, you have a chance, and that's what Andrew Luck is. He's a, he's a great, fantastic quarterback, 
and I'm excited for the season to get started. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Chuck Pagano. Resigning him, I know, was huge for a lot of the players, huge for a lot of the fans. What has he meant to you, not only as a coach, but also as kind of like a, a role model, and how, how important is it that he's back for this upcoming season and, and the beyond? I, I, you'll never hear a player that played for Chuck Pagano say they didn't like him. I mean, you're, he's a guy that you just want to run through a wall for. I'm not tough enough to do that, but it's a good expression to say that I would do anything for that guy. Um, you just go back to his first year, and I'm not going to grandstand on this, but he beat leukemia during the season. He's just a guy who oozes with motivation, oozes with optimism and positivity. And anytime you talk to him, he has a great quote, a quick quote for you, a quip to you to, to kind of raise your spirits. And uh, in the NFL, you, you you don't need a guy to rah rah you because everybody's trying to make a living. But a guy to make sure he keeps everything in perspective for you and keeps you positive and keeps you rolling wherever things are tough. That's a guy you want to coach your football team. And Chuck Pagano is that, just that. He's a great man. We all love him. We were real excited. We were real excited whenever it got announced that he uh, signed a, a, an extension. And uh, we can't wait to get started. Now, we have an extra preseason game next year because of that Hall of Fame game, uh, which is really, I'm really happy for Tony Dungy and Marvin Harrison getting in there. Uh, but we have to go to work early, which is good. We'll get some more work in. But we're real excited to get back in there with uh, the same head coach and the and team back ready to rock. Um, you're on Snapchat. You're on social media. Just talk about how important it is to connect with your fans and kind of show them the true person that is Pat McAfee, that you're just a regular guy because that's how you come off to a lot of us. Well, a big, a big thing for me was I wasn't a big fan of social media back in the day. I kind of enjoyed my privacy. Uh, but whenever I got in trouble, there was really no other option for me to kind of tell Colts Nation and the city of Indianapolis, who had no idea who I was in the state of Indiana, um, that, you know, I was very sorry for my mistake. Uh, I think I grew up as a huge football fan. I mean, I come from a family in Pittsburgh who loved football. My dad loved the Steelers. I wasn't a big Steelers fan, but I loved the, the players. And uh, I just wanted to let people know that I'm, I'm, I'm a regular guy. I made a mistake, and I just so happen to have the greatest job in the world. And I want to let you know that I'm I'm not going to make this mistake again. And as social media kind of evolved, and as I kind of started learning about it, uh, I think people started learning really quickly that uh, if they were in the NFL, we would be best friends. I assume, and it's that's kind of the way it is. I'm I'm a guy who comes from a family in Pittsburgh. It was blue collar family. We kind of worked hard. We were Pittsburgh. We were football fans. And I just so happened to get lucky to have a cannon attached to my right hip uh, that has kind of led me into the NFL. And I'm enjoying the hell out of the ride. I'm enjoying every day. I enjoy waking up and, and getting better. And I think my social media shows that. And uh, for me, I've loved kind of interacting with just Colts Nation, but people in general. I, I, I really enjoy conversating with people and social media has given me a chance to do that. In the past, the media were the only people that got to choose who had a voice. The quarterback had a voice, uh, the head coach had a voice, whatever the star player for that game had a voice, but nobody else really got to talk and the media kind of got to pick and choose what quotes. But now social media kind of breaks down all those walls and you get a chance to meet somebody for who they are, what they are, what they stand for. And uh, the state of Indiana has been so welcoming to me. I'm so lucky to be in, in the Hoosier state. And um, I've just tried to make the most of it and enjoy the interactions. What do you know about Fort Wayne or have you heard anything about, we were chatting a little bit about the size of Fort Wayne. What are you, are you, what are you most excited for for this show that's coming up? So I don't, until a couple, we started doing our research. And I had no idea that Fort Wayne had 256,000 people in it. I had no idea that it was the second largest city in Indiana. Uh, a lot of people have been, been tweeting me about Coney Island dogs, I guess. i got to stop up there and make that happen. Uh, but if Fort Wayne is anything like the rest of the state of Indiana, it's just filled with great people, uh, and I can't wait to get up there and meet them. I can't wait to chit-chat with them, tell some stories with them, see the city, and May 20th is going to be a night where I can't wait for it. I just can't wait to get up there. Uh, put some faces uh, to some names I've seen on the internet kind of learn about Fort Wayne, another great city in Indiana and uh, just make the most of it. May 20th is going to be a lot of fun I can't wait to see 2,500 people laugh their tails off